Come on, can we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus? If you love him. Hallelujah. If you adore him. Amen. If you appreciate him on this morning. Amen. How many know God is good? Yes. Yes, he is. You know, my grandmother had a saying, God is good all the time. All and all the time. God is God good. Is, oh, yeah, you, yes, got it. you got it. You got it. You got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to open up with worship this morning. And let's give God a wonderful praise and worship in this place. Now, some of you may not be accustomed to this type of worship experience, but we're going to get your feet wet on this morning. Is all that right, all right? All right. Amen. I want my true worshipers to stand to your feet. We're just kind of going to go a little traditional on you. Amen. A little call and response type of flow this morning. But we want the Lord to just envelop us in this Hallelujah. place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This little song that simply says, Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. 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 Have you tried? I said I got another one. All right. Hallelujah. I feel like praising it. I came this morning, wasn't feeling too good in my body, but I feel spiritual strength somehow. Amen. I feel like praising God in this place this morning. I don't know what you come to do. 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 You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. I come to praise the Lord. I come to praise the Lord. I come to praise the Lord. Help me to praise the Lord. I don't know what you come to do. 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 You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you. I come to praise his name. I come to praise his name. I come to praise his name. Help me to lift his name. I don't know what you come to do. 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 You and you and you and you. 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 I come to 
praise the Lord. The Lord. I come to praise the Lord. The Lord. Help me to praise the Lord. The Lord. Help me to praise the Lord. The Lord. Help me to praise his name. His name. Help me to praise his name. his name. Help me to lift him up. Him Help me to lift him up. Him Help me to sing my song. My song. Help me to sing my song. my song. Help me to sing my song. My song. Help me to sing my song. My Listen. Song. Help me to shout for joy. Shout for joy. Help me to shout for joy. Help me to shout for joy. I don't know what you come to do. 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 You and you and you and you. 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 Help me to praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. I see some of you clapping. Praise the Lord. 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 Shout for joy. Shout for joy! Shout for joy! Shout for joy! Shout for joy! Woo! I don't know what you come to do. 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 You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. I come to praise His name. His name. I come to yeah. praise. Put your hands together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you come to praise him this morning. Yeah. He's hallelujah, worthy hallelujah, hallelujah. to be praised. Yeah. Amen, hallelujah. amen, amen, amen. God bless you. While the children are getting situated, uh, our contribution for Black History Month is the children learned about James Weldon Johnson, who uh, was asked to make a speech at a birthday celebration for Abraham Lincoln, who had signed the Emancipation Proclamation. He instead wrote a poem entitled lift every voice and sing and he asked his brother to put it to music and i would ask you to stand today while the children sing this song for you it um was popular during the uh 1900s revived in during the civil rights movement 1950s and 1960s so hopefully they are ready to sing this for you.
we give those time to come in. Good morning, everyone. Let's give God a hand clap of praise in this house as we move forward, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. We thank God for the privilege of being able to baptize a young lady who has confessed her living hope in Jesus Christ and who has made a profession of faith and now desires to get baptized. Jesus told his disciples as well as us in Matthew the 28th chapter verses 18, 19, and 20, it says, then Jesus came unto them saying, all authority and all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that what I have commanded you, and lo, I will be with you even unto the ends of the earth. What Jesus taught us is that pro the proclamation of the gospel is to proclaim Christ, to tell the story. The teaching of the gospel is an explanation of the gospel. We proclaim Christ so that people can get saved. We teach so that people's mind and their hearts can be illuminated and they can grow in Christ, but we baptize so they can be identified in obedience to Christ. So proclamation, the gospel is preached by way of proclamation. People are taught by way of explanation and people are made one with Christ through baptism by way of identification. And today we have one who has been baptized and give God a round of applause for Olivia as she's come. Let's give God some praise. The Bible said heaven rejoices when one sinner repents and come to Christ. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Amen. amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. We have a reason to rejoice. Amen. It's time for our prayer. It's time for altar call, First Baptist. Let us stand and come across the aisle. So at this time, let's just give God a hand clap of praise for our children. Amen. <laughs> Lift every voice. There's a verse in that song that talks about through our weary years and our silent tears, the one who has brought us this far or thus far. Amen. There are some people here know that there was nobody but God that brought you this far. Amen. And it's going to be God to take us all the way. Amen. Oh, dear God, we thank you. God, we thank you just for grace and mercy. Lord, you give us new mercies every day. And Lord, for that, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for just looking beyond our faults yet addressing our needs. Oh, Lord, we know that maybe we could have been cut off a long time ago. But, God, because you are God, because you have been kind to us, oh, Lord, because you have just shown us mercy, even in the midst of our stuff, oh, Lord, for that, we just want to say thank you. Now, Lord, as we approach your, approach your throne, oh, Lord, heavy-hearted, Lord, sickness in our bodies, 
Oh, Lord, confusion in our minds. Oh, Lord, I just pray that you will deliver and heal like only you can. Oh, Lord, touch us in a mighty way. And, Lord, where we have fallen short, oh, Lord, please forgive us for our many sins. And, Lord, help us have a forgiving heart. Oh, God, we need you now. We need you, Lord, because we just can't make it without you. So, Lord, I just ask you to please show up in a mighty way here at First Baptist. Lord, through in the aisles, Father, in our choir, oh, Lord, to preach word, songs, prayers, oh, Lord, just have your way. Tell us what it is that you would have us to do, what you would have us to say. And, Lord, we're going to just thank you in advance because we know that the victory is already won. We just got to step into it. And Lord, give us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the courage just to step into what you have for us, oh Lord. We know it, it has to be great if it comes from you, Lord. So God, just show us the way. Lord, forgive us for our sins of omission as well as our sins of commission. And Lord, we're going to just commit this service to you. Have your way, O oh Lord. We give you thanks, and Lord, we love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I do pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Do we have any first time visitors with us? If so, would you please stand? Do we have any first time visitors? All right. Okay, now we have them standing. Let's give them a hand clap of love and a hand clap of welcome. Also, welcome those who might be streaming with us for the first time, as well as those who will be joining us by radio later in the week. Just know that God loves you and we love you as well. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating Red Dress Sunday, and the uh, women's ministry and the nurses' guide will be sponsoring this. And we are asking that everyone please wear something red. They will be providing health information, recipes, smoothies, and nutritional snacks in the choir room after Sunday school, as well as after 11 a.m. service. There is going to be a human, human trafficking awareness seminar, and that's going to be held on March the 3rd, and that's going to be at the uh, UAW Union Hall located on 3000 Fern Valley Road. So if you've been watching the news or anything on Facebook or in the newspapers, we know that that is something that is in, increasing. And so this seminar is going to be held to bring more awareness to that. You go, they will teach you or show you what it is, what to look for, how to spot victims, and so that we can help get ahead of this uh, and to learn how and what way that we can help. So again, this is going to be on March the 3rd. It will be at 10 a.m. at the UAW Union Hall located at 3000. Fern Valley Road, and it is a human trafficking, I can't say that word, awareness seminar. So if you can or you're available, please prepare to attend this. So at this time, we're going to have an um, announcement coming from Brother Jerome, followed by a video from the REACH Evangelism Ministry team. I mean, good morning, First Baptist and friends. Uh, it is a blessing indeed uh, to be back in the house of worship one more time. Amen. Amen. Uh, we uh, just want to um, refresh uh, your memory on this uh, month's announcements concerning our Black History program uh, that we have. Can you all hear me okay? Uh, uh, concerning our Black History uh, program that we will uh, feature here on the fourth Sunday, the fourth Sunday. Uh, we have a wonderful program outline, and uh, uh, we just want you to be, in, uh, be a part and be involved. Um, on that fourth Sunday, we will have our 8 a.m. service with an observance, uh, also the 11 o'clock with an observance. Uh, we will dismiss from our 11 o'clock service, and we will uh, retreat to our Lower Level and Family Life Center, where we will have dinner, a full course meal prepared for you and yours. Amen? Amen. 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 Fried chicken. Mm -hmm. yeah. Collard greens. Yeah. Collard greens. Not chitlins, Doc. No chitlins. No chitlins. Uh, we're going to do fried chicken. I'm preparing the greens. Hello, somebody. Uh, yes. Um, we will have, it's a real good southern traditional meal that will be prepared for each and every one of us here on that Sunday. And looking forward to you being a part. Now, we also want to uh, address the uh, notion that we would love for you all to come on that Sunday featured in your African garb, amen? amen. Ladies, wear your African uh, dresses and wraps and uh, your earrings and bracelets, your necklaces, all of those wonderful accessories. Also, uh, gentlemen, now we don't want you to wear no dress. Come on with your African bow tie. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but come uh, with your dashikis if you have them. Now, some of y'all probably have to go up in the uh, attic and pull those out the box, but do that. Uh, come ready uh, to celebrate on the fourth, uh, fourth Sunday. Now, last and final, uh, and I failed to um, mention this earlier, but I want to make it known to you t in this service, 
Listen, we want to uh, make a special contribution to those who have contributed to First Baptist Church as well as our community. Amen. Amen. We have, you look around you in this, in this uh, setting this morning, there are, are scores of people who are business owners, professionals, doctors, lawyers, uh, accountants, you name it. And um, I don't know if any of you uh, have, have ever heard of uh, a community in, uh, outside of Kansas called uh, the Black, it was labeled as the Black Wall Street in the 19, early 1920s. Now, it was a community that was filled with all of our ethnic uh, peoples, amen? And uh, it, we were self-contained, self-sustained. We all had we, everything that was needed in a community, we had it. And so uh, I'm just encouraging you to um, bring to our attention uh, those individuals who are business owners uh, in our church, in our community, because we want to do something special. We want to give back to you. Amen. You've done a tremendous job of giving back and sowing into First, B uh, First Baptist Church. We won't want to take, take the time to recognize you on that Sunday. So if there is a business owner that you know of or some uh, professional person that you would like uh, to be acknowledged and honored on that Sunday, Please don't fail to submit their names. If you will look in the, uh, toward the back of your bulletin, there's a little form that uh, is to be filled out um, so that uh, those names can be properly submitted uh, with the pertinent and relevant information with those individuals so that on that Sunday we can acknowledge all of you. Amen? We don't want nobody to be uh, missed or no one to go unrecognized. So if you would be so kind as uh, before you leave the services today, f take the time to fill out that form of someone that you know. Amen. And, and it's, it's a special blessing if they are actual members of FBC. Amen. Because we want to pay special homage to you. But if they are community leaders and contributors, we want to recognize you also. Amen. Look forward to seeing you on the fourth Sunday. God bless you. player no okay uh, the, the reach ministry evangelism is uh, collecting blankets through uh, the 18th of this month to uh, distribute to to uh, the forgotten Louisville we encourage each one of you to uh, donate a blanket we most of us in here wake up every every morning you know go to bed warm and, and snuggy and, and all, but there is a community that uh, does not eat. They're trying to find food. They're trying to stay warm, and, uh, and they need donations from us. Uh, I, I do know that some of the homeless camps have been uh, destroyed, and so with that happening, uh, blankets have, have uh, been destroyed and all. And so we just asked uh, for, for, for you to donate blankets and then also sleeping bags uh, for this endeavor that, that we are doing. We will, we will be going uh, down on River Road on the 18th, to on the, no, on the 21st to distribute the blankets. So please donate. Uh, Sister Kane, uh, she came uh, up to me in Walmart the other day and uh, Walmart has <coughs> blankets on sale. And so please donate. There are people that really need this. Thank you. Amen. And the bins are around the church. It is offering time. Amen. So ask if you need an envelope, would you raise your hand, please? There are five ways of giving. We have in-house through check, cash, kiosk. You can pay online, as well as um, auto-pay deduct through your bank. 
God commands us to give of our first fruits, just to give back what he has so generously and graciously given us. We would ask that everyone would please stand. Father in heaven, we just thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you for the way that you care for us, for the way that you provide for us. We also thank you now for the opportunity just to give back what you have so freely and so generously and with much love given us. We just ask that you will bless those who gave, bless those who had not to give, and change the hearts of those who had to give but gave not. And we pray, Father, that these monies will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and everything will be done decent and in order and pleasing in your sight. And the people of God and all the church says, Amen. Sometimes on this Christian journey, old Satan is on my track. He tries, he tries so very hard, tries his best to hold me back. But that's all right, I'm going to keep on pressing on. I'm going to make it to that finish line. That's why I need just a little more grace for victory to be mine. Oh, Lord, I need just a little more grace. Lord, I need just a little more grace. Lord, I need just a little more grace. I need a little. what I want the Lord to do for me. I want him to give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me, Lord. Give it to me. 
give it to me just a little more grace just a little more power just a little more love lord just a little more joy i want that peace only you can give i want that joy lord only you can give your power, send me to power, let it fall on me, Lord, let it fall on me, send your anointing, send down your anointing, let it fall on me, let it fall on me, Lord, I said grace. How many feel like you need a little more grace? Amen. Just to see me through. Amen. I thank God for our male chorus and our music department. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for them. Amen. Growing in numbers and in song, we thank God for them. And uh, all we need is about 20 or 30 more men and we can fill this thing up. Amen. Amen. So, so if you're a man and you can't sing, or even if you can sing, Amen. We say, come as you are. Amen. Yeah, we want, we want you to be a part of us. Amen. Don't you all want all the men up there? Amen. That's what I'm talking about. You know, if my brother can get up there, anybody can get up there. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just joking. <laughs> all right. Moving right along. Well, first of all, I got to apologize because on last month, I did not acknowledge everyone for their birthday and uh, anniversaries, so I want to do some catching up today. So for everyone who celebrated their birthday in the month of January, I want you to stand on your feet so we can acknowledge you. Everybody, all January babies, amen, amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Had quite a few January babies, Amen. So we thank God for you. We pray God give you many, many more. So on the count of three, keep standing, keep standing. You don't get this but once a year. Amen. On the count of three, we're going to sing happy birthday. I want everybody to join in. Amen. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for them. May God give you many, many more. All right. And if you celebrated your wedding anniversary in the month of January, I'm going to ask that you would stand. Anybody get married in the month of January? All right, Miss Jill. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay, we had one at 8 o'clock and one at 11 o'clock. Okay. How many years, Miss Jill? Four years. All right, congratulations. Amen. We pray that God give you many, many more. And as we always say, marriage works, but you got to put in overtime and work on your marriage. Amen. All right. Let's give God a hand clap praise for her as well. Amen. All right. Now, everybody who is celebrating their birthday in the month of February, I want you to stand. Every All February, babies. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Quite, quite a few February babies. Amen. So let's, uh, I was going to say let's pray. I'm sorry. <laughs> on, on, the, <laughs> on the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to 
Come on, one more time for all these birthday babies. Amen. Praise God. May God give you many, many more. Now, if you got married in the month of February, your Valentine still got you them goosebumps. Okay, even if you don't have the goosebumps, stand up. Amen. All right. Anybody get married in February? All right, all right. Praise the Lord. How many years, Brother Glenn? You think it's seven? <laughs> don't nobody tell nobody. It's just what goes on in the FBC stays in the FBC. Amen. Congratulations. Seven years. All right, Mark. One magnificent year. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. One year already? Already, man. Time going by. Go ahead, my brother. 25. Amen. No wonder you came all sharp today, I tell you. <laughs> no, we praise God for all of you. We pray and trust that God will give you many, many more years of blissful marriage. Amen. We thank God for you. But like we always say, marriage works, but you got to work at your marriage. Amen. Uh, I want also just good to see Sister Nona here today, um, back in town from New York. Amen. Glad to have you. All right. She's been away taking care of her son, member of our church. So glad that God got you back. And also, Brother Daly, uh, Falon Daly, uh, stand up. He's been sick for a while. Glad to see you back in the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is doing a great thing. And good to see all of you who are back and those who are live streaming. We trust and pray that you've been blessed as we're blessed having you. Uh, come and worship with us. So at this time, we're going to turn it back over to the male chorus in our music department, and then we'll come back with a brief word from the Lord. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise for them. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> it is a great thing to be here, I'll tell you. Okay, so we're going to, um, it's Black History Month, and, um, you know, Jerome was saying earlier that, uh, you know, he was talking about the music. And actually, we're going to have a, a music presentation next week. But in the meantime, um, I, and even I was saying earlier that um, for every time that we've had triumphs, like as far as African-American music overall, and any time we've had struggles, there's always been some soundtrack um, music that, that reflected uh, what we were going through, whether it be slavery, whether it be, you know, freedom, uh, the Underground Railroad, just, just all kind of stuff. But um, the song that we're going to do today, actually, um, is uh, from 1990. There was an era, a time, uh, that uh, say, well, it was popular in 1990, where the, the popular music was New Jack Swing. Does somebody know something about New Jack Swing? Oh, see, we got somebody here that knows something about that. <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. Um, and, you know, actually, the church, you know, we had some people that were doing, that, that were in gospel, that were, like, at the height of New Jack Swing, we were doing it, too. There was a group of brothers called the Winans, and we're about to uh, sing a song that they did back in that day. It's time to make a change. Yeah, we need a couple mics. See, did that one work? Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, hold the mics up. Hold the mics up. Let me see if this green mic is working. All right, we got a couple working mics here. This message. Check, 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 one. check, check, check. All right. Test, All right. test. Let's go on and do this. <laughs> Well, it's 
time to make that change. People of the world today are fading. All of us have our ups and downs. Better think about it or you won't be around. All we need is a little bit of love. Sent by one from heaven above. I take it from a G, yeah. simple and plain. Yeah. This ain't no game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's time. It's about that, about time. that time. Yeah. time. to make a change. Yeah, yeah. We are the people. We can do it. About that time, y'all. Time to make a change. We are the people. We can do it. What is the world coming to? Seems like everybody's running from the truth. We must stand and fight. We're walking to the light. We the people. We can do it if we try. Time, on, yeah. time to make a change, you know. We are the people who can do it. Hey, 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 hey. About that time, y'all. Time to make a change. We are the people we can do it. Hey, hey. it's time to make that change. People of the world today are fading. All of us have our ups and downs. Better think about it or you won't be around. All we need a little bit of love uh, sent by one from heaven uh, above. Uh, Take it uh, from G, it's simple and plain. Yeah, this ain't no yeah, game, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. About that time. time, time to make a change. You know it. We are the people who can do it. Time, time to make a change. We are the people who can do it. It's time, oh time, it's time to make a change. Stand up and do it. We are the people. We can do it. Strong, 
but to the one who endures to the end. Problems, and sometimes you have to walk, walk alone. And I know that I know that I know things will work out. Yes, they will. For the good of him. For the good of him who loved the You can't! You can't! 
love the Lord. They wait upon the Lord to renew the strength. Ooh, ooh. Love them with all your heart. Who love them with all your soul. Ooh, oh, yeah. out for the good of them who love God. How many of y'all love God today? Sometimes loving God causes the enemy to come against you. But whatever you're going through today, I want you to know it'll work out. It might be a financial problem, but God is able to supply all of your needs. It might be a sickness or some kind of disease in your body, but God is able to heal today. It might be some type of emotional disturbance that you're going through, but I stop by to tell somebody, whatever it is, it will work out. If you love him today, if you've been called by him, it's going to work out for your good. And so no matter what happens, don't give up, don't, don't become weary, don't throw in the towel. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. How many know that's the truth? In due season. You'll reap it. Whatever God has for you, God will get it to you. Just wait on the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and our Christ for the privilege of worshiping you in spirit and in truth today. We give you all the praise, honor, and the glory, and we magnify you, we exalt you, we glorify you, and we lift you up, O oh God, because there's none like unto you. And we pray, God, that your word will now go forth and re not return unto you more, but accomplish the purpose for which you sent it. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, O oh God, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We thank you, God, for all things. Forgive us of our sins and receive our prayer. Have thine own way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise in this house today. It's going to work out. Thank God for our mail course, for our music department. Thank God for our young ushers and those on the usher ministry team. Thank God for those in AV and all those who are with our children and our youth today. We praise God for you. And I thank God for all of our ministers and our deacons and all those that are part of our ministry team here at First Baptist Church. Those who are live streaming, we welcome you into our midst. I'm going to tell you, ask you to take your Bible in your hand. This book is the Word of God. It was written with me in mind. It has the power to change my life. I have the power to receive it or reject it. What I do with it determines what it can do in me. It is God's gift to me for the abundant life. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. It is my goal as your pastor and as your uh, brother in Christ to help all of us get to that point where we literally know God and live the kind of life that he has called us to live according to his abundant blessings that come solely through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so today I want to invite you to one verse of scripture in the Gospel of St. John, the 17th chapter, verse 3, where Jesus prays his priestly prayer. And as he prepares to go to Calvary's cross, he is preparing his, uh, himself by way of prayer, and he has been preparing his disciples for how to continue the ministry after he ascends back to glory. And so we look at this in verse 3 of chapter 17, and Jesus speaks these words, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, 
the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I want to talk about the goal of Christ for Christianity. The purpose why Christ came into this world, the goal of Christ for Christianity. Amen. That's our word for today. The goal of Christ for Christianity. If you look at the state of the church today, and what I mean by the state of the church, the local church in general, then if I ask the average person what is the goal of Christ, we will get multiple answers and responses. But I want you to know that God's ultimate aim in sending his son into this world above and beyond just saving us so that we can go to heaven was for us to get to know him for who he is. God wants every person to know him as the only true and living God. Because there's a lot of lowercase gods in the world idols that people worship, trees, birds, uh, the different things of the world that people bow down to. But God wants us to know him personally. He wants us to know him personally. He wants us to know him intimately. And he wants us to know him eternally. God wants you to know him. He wants you to know him as well as you know yourself. And Jesus in this verse speaks in his priestly prayer as he prays unto his heavenly father and he says this is eternal life that they may know you. Eternal life is not just going to heaven. It's not just being saved from the penalty of our sins and the power of our sins and one day from the very presence of our sins, but eternal life is knowing God for who he is. And I pray as we go through this series of sermons and lessons through this year, that by the end of this year, December 31st, 2018, that you and I will know God like he wants us to know God, or at least be a whole lot closer to knowing him. Because it's our goal this year to know God in Christ, to, to grow in God in Christ, and to sow God in Christ. That is, God wants us to know him so we can grow in him, so we can sow him. You can't sow him if you don't know him, and you can't know him if you don't grow in him. So God wants us to know him. How many of y'all really want to know him today? I really want to know God as he wants me to know him. And so the goal of Christ coming into the world was not just to establish some religious organization where we meet on a weekly basis and where we go through the basic rituals of ceremonies and, and rituals of, of, of what we call worship. God's desire through Jesus Christ for, was for you and I to know him. Now, you have to understand as we look at this particular text, the goal of Christ for Christianity is to make God known to the world. He wanted to make the world known to God, or make the a world known of God. If you go back to verse 3, if you will, as I read a few of those uh, following verses, he says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Here it is, verse 6. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. And now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. The goal of Christ for Christianity was to make God known to the world. Jesus came into this world so that mankind who had backslidden and gotten away from God will come to know God again. Well, what does it mean to know God? We make God known to the world through our Christian witness because not only did Christ come to make God known to the world, by us coming to know him, it becomes our responsibility as those who have been saved and those who have been born again to make the world know God 
through various means. First and foremost, I want to suggest that we are to make God known to the world through our witness. What does that mean? From the Greek perspective, the word witness meant one who was martyred or who would die for Christ. But in this sense, I'm speaking of one who will literally witness every person who has been saved, every person who says they've been redeemed, every person that says God has rescued them should have the witness that God has delivered me. Because the word salvation comes from a Greek word that literally means delivered. You may have been a prostitute, you may have been a drug dealer, you may have been a thief, you may have been a liar, you may have been promiscuous, whatever your sins were, God has delivered you from that, and as a result of God delivering you, and as a result of God redeeming you, you ought to make known God to the world by your witness. In other words, you ought to have a witness of what you used to be. See, sometimes we get caught up in our so-called holiness in the house of worship, and we act like we ain't never been nowhere or ever done anything. But the only way God gets glory is by people knowing our story. And somebody's got to tell somebody that there used to be a time in our lives when we were not the Christians we are today. That's why I don't mind telling people my past. Not that I glory in it, but a failure to tell people where I've been and a failure to tell people where I've come out of or what God has brought me out of is a failure to give God glory. Because there might be somebody in the congregation who is going through what God has brought you through. And every now and again, like in the old days, they used to have testimony service, and and testimony service, somebody would stand up and say, I was an alcoholic, but but God delivered me from alcohol, and I'm now 10 or 12 years sober. Somebody else would stand up and say, well, I was promiscuous, but but God allowed me to get cleansed, and now I'm married, and I'm saved, and, and I've been with this one person for years. Somebody else might say I was on drugs, but God delivered me, and I'm no longer pushing drugs or taking drugs, but now I'm dealing in Christ. I stop by to tell somebody, everybody ought to have a used to be testimony. I used to be a liar. I used to be a thief. I used to be this, that, that, or the other. Because if you're saved, you ought to have a used to be testimony. In Psalm 107 and 2, it said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And if you've been redeemed, if you've been rescued, don't be afraid or ashamed to say so. In fact, I maintain parents ought to sit down with their children, or at least at some time, let their children know what they've been into and what God has brought them out of so that your children won't look as like you've been perfect all your life, but know that the same God that brought you out is able to bring them out. You know, we perfected this facade of presenting ourselves as Christians as if we have no evil past. And so sinners come into the house seeking God, but they never hear of anybody, or very seldom hear of anybody, who confesses they're still struggling. Because we walk like we're on holy ground all the time. We walk like we got halos over our head at all times. But the truth is, if folk could see us outside of this sanctuary, or if they were on their fly on the wall in the midnight hour in some of our homes, they would discover we're not as holy as we pretend to be. I stopped by to tell you, you got to tell your story for God to get the glory. In fact, one of the things that Jesus made, and God made a requisite of the children of Israel, he says, tell your children and your children's children how I brought you out of Egypt. Because everybody had an Egypt. Everybody goes through a wilderness. But we're on our way to Canaan land. And you and I must learn how to tell our Egypt stories when we were slaves to whatever entangled us and whatever held us captive. Quit acting like you got it all together. Because even if you're saved, you've not arrived yet. Can I get a witness? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Even if you've been saved for a while, even like the Apostle Paul says, I'm not yet apprehended. I ain't got there yet, but I'm striving and I'm pressing toward the mark. Anybody pressing toward the mark of the high calling of our God in Christ Jesus? We make God known to the world through our witness. Jesus says in Matthew 28, 19, I talked about it when we did the baptism. 
He, said, he says, and now all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and, 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 and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you even until the end of the age. Our responsibility is to be a witness to the world, and especially in the day and age in which we live. Because too many of us as Christians, when we watch news, when we read the paper, when we get on Facebook, or when we see the social media and look at some of the things that happen, what we do is we shake our heads. But God put us here to make a difference. You might not be able to change the world, but you can change the community that you live in. You might not be able to change the community, but you can at least change your household. Because God calls us to be a light. We make God known to the world through our Christian witness, but we also make God known to the world through our Christian, our Christ-like words. Our words, according to Psalm, I mean, uh, Proverbs, carry life and death. Proverbs 18:21, the Bible says that, that, that words, our words in, in, in our tongues is the power of life and death. And do you not know that we are called as Christians to speak words that are Christ-like so that we can speak words of life and not death. We've got to get this by way of practice. One of the things that we're doing on Wednesday evening as we go through the book of James is we've been challenging each other that, that we will go the next seven days until we meet again without saying anything negative. And no matter what anybody says to us on our jobs or whatever they do, we're going to respond with a Christ-like word. Now, I tell you, that is not an easy task because every now and then you just want to let somebody, anybody know what I'm talking about? You just want to let somebody have it, but then you're reminded. Look at, look at Ephesians 4 and 29. Now turn, turn that with me real quickly because I want you to understand why it's so important for us to speak words that are Christ-like. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 29, it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. He says, in other words, the way we are a light to the world, not only by our witness, but let our words edify, let our words build, let our words construct the lives of others. He says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. See, sometimes we don't want to depart grace or impart grace, we want to give them something else. But, but what people need to hear is a word of edification. In fact, I maintain that most people who are wrong or who are going through something already know they're wrong. They need to hear a word from the Lord. Is there anybody in the house that's ever been in a situation and you know how down and depressed and how depraved you were and all you needed was a word? You didn't need nobody to tell you you were a sinner. You didn't need nobody to tell you you were messed up. You didn't know need nobody to tell you you were wrong. You needed to hear somebody to tell you there is hope and there is a God that is able. A word that builds, a word that edifies, a word that lifts up. A simple word that just simply said, look, I know what you're going through and I know you meant me hard, but I want you to know that I'm praying for you. I love you. God is still able. I want you to talk to somebody who's going through a financial storm and say, I know what you're going through and I'm going to help you as much as I can, but I want you to know that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord and if you belong to God, God will supply all of you need a word that will edify. They might have somebody on the sick bed and they're walking the floor at night, but you got to tell them, look, I don't know what the doctor said, but I know a doctor bigger than the doctor and you got to be able to talk to them and give them a word of edification. People need to be built up. We, we, we become so good at criticizing each other that every now and then we just need to start practicing, not looking at the bad so much, start looking at the good. Amen. We make, known, make God known to the world through our witness and through our word, but watch this, also through our walk. Turn to 2 Corinthians, if you will, the second, third chapter. In 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, it helps us understand in verses 2 and 3, that we make God known through our walk. Watch this. He says, you are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Don't, don't miss that. He says, he says, you're the letter. You are our letter. 
what we have poured in you. You are a walking letter for other people to read. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that when you drive on the interstate or when you're driving down the street, when you go to work or wherever you go, you are a walking, riding letter. And God will, and people are reading you because it's been said, and it's so true, that the only Bible some people will read is us. We are the first Bible some people will read. Somebody has never picked up a word, but they got to see the word in us. And the only way they can see it is by the way we walk. The way we carry ourselves is so important. And I thank God that we live in a day and time when everybody saying, well, God is going to do it. God will bless you. But God knows that I want you to understand your blessings come from obedience and walking in the ways of God. And so he wants us to be a witness for him. He wants us to share a word for him. He wants us to walk in his ways. But then he wants us to let people know him by way of our ways. Notice in Matthew 5, 16, it said, let your light so shine so that men might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. How do we win people to Christ? People gotta see our ways. Because he says if your light is shining, people will see you, and as a result of what they see, they will glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's why we gotta be careful, especially when we're in public or in private, because you never know who's watching you. Amen. God doesn't even want you to allow your children to stumble as a result of your actions. In John 13, 35, it says, By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. How do people know we're God's children? By the way we carry ourselves when we walk in his way. By the love we show. And let me say this about love. We'll get on this at another time. But let me say this about love. Loving is not loving people you like. Amen. When God speaks of us loving others and by us being known by the world, by the love we show, he's talking about loving people like he loved us. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. How many know that God loved you before you got right with God? Come on, talk to me. Though. Everybody should have raised their hand. God didn't love you because you were right. God loved you because you were wrong. And he gave us or exchanged the righteousness of Christ for our wrongness. And so the world knows us by our witness, by our words, by our walk, and by our ways. That's how they get to know us. But watch this, the goal of Christ for Christianity is to know God personally. God wants you to know him personally. You can't get to heaven and you can't know God based on somebody else. You might have a pastor that will share the word and help break down the word, but you've got to know him for yourself. You might have a mother or father that might be in the word and might try to teach you, but you've got to know him for yourself. God wants you to know him personally. Notice what Jesus says in verse 3. He says you have given him authority uh, in, in, uh, in, in, it says, over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you. That they may know you. God wants you to know him personally. Jeremiah 9, 23, and I'm going to read this. It says, this is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches, but those who wish to boast shall boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. God says through Jeremiah, he says, don't boast about how much money you got because that's going to perish. Don't boast, about, don't boast about what kind of house you live in and how many bedrooms you got and how many bathrooms you got. He said, all of that's going to perish. Don't, don't boast about what kind of bank account you got and how much money you got stored up because all of that, you're going to leave it to somebody else. He said, but if you got to boast, boast about the fact you know me. And I don't know about you, but the best thing that has happened to me is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Are there at least two or three folk in the house that can say with honesty, I know the Lord. I know him for myself. I know him personally because I've had an encounter with Christ. I didn't just know him by reading. 
I didn't just know him by, by somebody talking to him. I, I, I was introduced to him by reading. I was introduced to him by somebody telling me about it. But then one Friday, hallelujah, December 24th, 1979, I had an encounter with him. And I fell to my knees. And for the first time in my life, I cried like a baby. And I felt the weight of the world fall off of me because that's what happens when Christ comes into your life. And while I was in the same situation that I was in, when I got up off my knees, I was a changed man. And I wonder if there's anybody in the house that's ever experienced God. You looked the same on the outside, but you knew something on the inside had happened, and you wasn't the same person you used to be. I mean, on the outside, your skin hadn't changed, your looks hadn't changed, but your desires had changed. Your, your, come on, talk to me, somebody. It, it was a change on the inside. I know him personally, and it was when I got to know him personally that I began to grow in him and to know him intimately. See, the goal of Christ was to make God known to those who had a true desire to know God. And once that seed was planted, I had a desire to know him. So I sought after him with all my heart. And let me suggest that you will never know God personally just through the pastor. No, no, no. Just, no, you've got to put some effort in this thing. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 7 and 7, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be open. Watch this, ask and it shall be given, seek. That means you got to put some effort into it. Hebrews 11 and 6 said, but with that, it's impossible, without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and one who uh, diligently seeks him. That, that, that is to say he rewards those who diligently seek him. That means you got to put some effort into it. Jesus says, if any man come unto me, let him take up his cross, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. The cross means you got to go through something, but you got to be pursuing to discover who he really is. Thank God you show up on a Sunday, but you got to spend some time with him to get to know him personally. You don't just want to know him on a casual basis. See, see, in fact, let me suggest like this. You can meet somebody and date them for years and think you know them, but when they move in with you, come on, you, you, you'll say we've been together 15 years. I didn't know you had this going on. Because when you get in, in the same thing together, that same cubicle, and, and whatever you're in that house, when you become worn like that, you discover things about that person that you didn't know before. I didn't know you leave her in the sink all the time. Every time I came to your house, it was clean. I didn't know you laid clothes everywhere. Every time you come home from work, every time I came to your house, it was immaculate. I didn't know you didn't like cologne. Every time we met, you were smelling good. There's something about living together. You discover things about that other person. And the longer you stay together, the more you discover. I don't mind sharing my wife and I have been married 35 years, and I still don't know her. <laughs> and she still don't know me. We know, I, we know each other a whole lot better, but I promise you that there are some days recently that we said, Lord, what's going on? She said, Lord, help him. <laughs> and while she was praying in one room, I was praying in the other one. Lord! Because <laughs> the longer you stay together, the more you discover about each other. And you know what that's called? That's called intimacy. Because the longer you stay together, the more you become into each other. And you learn other things about each other. Some things that you pray that are going to change, they're going to never change. I, I've learned that. <laughs> so if you're going to get stressed out every time you see what you don't like seeing, you're going to stay stressed out. So, so instead of praying for that person, start praying for yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to be frustrated, agitated, irritated, aggravated, just mad. 
So you got to learn how to live with each other by living with each other. You got to learn just to accept some things, you know, and especially as you get older, because people get senile. <laughs> or at least they act like they get senile when they get older. The goal of Christ for Christianity is to know him intimately. Watch this, intimacy with God is not a superficial exercising of religious rituals, ceremonies, or good deeds, but intimacy with God is a supernatural experience that ushers us into oneness with God that allows us to become partakers of his divine nature and his divine will. In John the 17th chapter, verse 22, right there in the same passage that we're looking at, Jesus uses these words beginning at verse 20. He says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That is to say that Jesus is still praying for us. He said, I'm not just praying for the apostles. I'm praying for everybody who gets saved through their word. But watch this. He said that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And so God's desire for us is to know him so intimately that we become one with him as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one and inseparable. That, that's God's desire. That we be, and so you can't get that with just a casual of conver- uh, 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 Christianity. You've got to pursue him with all that you have. In fact, I maintain that the Bible tells us in 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4, when it says, according to his divine power, God has given us everything uh, for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. But then in verse 4, it says that we might be divine partakers, or we might be partakers of his divine nature. God wants us to be a part of his divine nature. The word uh, 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 divine in that text means everything that's heavenly and above all things that are earthly, and the word partaker means to share in. So that says that when Christ came into the world, he came so that we could share in, become one with God, so we could share in his divine nature. That is not being little gods, but being able to overcome everything and anything because of the God that's within us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? What is he saying? He says when the, when the nature of God becomes a part of you and you become a partaker of God's divine nature, then it doesn't matter what the enemy brings against you, you've got the power to overcome it because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God wants us to be partakers of his divine nature, not just to be churchgoers. Not just to feel good about ourselves because we read the Bible sometime. He wants us to partake of his divine nature. I ain't got enough time to spend on it now, but he wants us to become one with him. He wants us to know him intimately. In fact, then Paul says, I want you to look at Philippians, the third chapter, and I'm going to close. I got one more thing, and I'm going to leave you alone. In Philippians, the third chapter, beginning at verse 8, Paul writes these words. He says, yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Here it is, that I may know him, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. Paul writes these words and says, I don't just want to know Jesus on a surface level. I want to know the power of his suffering. And you get to know him when you're willing to go through what he's willing to send you through. He says, I want to know the power of his suffering. I want to know the power of his resurrection. And you can't have a resurrection if there's no death. And some of us just need to die to our selfish needs and desires. Because knowing Christ requires sacrifice. If you go back and read what Paul wrote, he talks about all the things that he gave up and counted it as dumb to win Christ. You can't just win the best of Christ by holding on to everything. You got to let some stuff go. And every now and again, you got to come to a point where you forget about the past and press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Knowing God intimately involves intentionally seeking, suffering, and sacrificing everything we have to know and experience him supernaturally. That's what it means. Not just casual Christianity. Giving up everything so we can gain all of him. Giving up all of me so I can gain all of him. Giving up everything so I can gain everything. And a lot of us are afraid to make the exchange because we think if we give up everything, we're going to lose everything. But I want you to know that you can't beat God giving. Whatever you give, he will double it. Or he will give it back sevenfold. Because that's the kind of God we serve. And then finally, the goal of Christianity and the goal of Christ for Christianity is to know God eternally. Jesus says in verse 3 again as I close, he says, and this is eternal life that they may know you. Christ's goal was to establish a true Christianity with the one true God that would not only guarantee the Christian's interest and in eternal life in heaven, but that would supply and sustain the Christian with everything the Christian need to accomplish God's will and to live out his or her life to the glory of God here on earth. In other words, when God saved us, he didn't just want you to get saved and go to heaven. That is one of the perks of Christianity and salvation. But God wanted to empower you so that here on earth you can walk in the power of our God. In Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 20, the Bible says God is able. How many know he's able? To do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. Notice this, through the power that works in us. God wants us to understand that in knowing him, he has supernaturally infused himself into our lives so that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises against us in the judgment shall be condemned because this is our heritage. And every now and again, when the devil comes against your home or against your life or attacks you, you got to start talking to him and you got to say no weapon formed against me. Why? Because this is my heritage. Heritage. And we talking about celebrating the black heritage and black history and a part of our heritage. But your heritage as a Christian is not to be under the circumstances, but above the circumstances. You will go through it, but you'll get through it. And so the Bible encourages us to not give up, to not throw in the towel, to not become weary, to not grow tired. God will provide. And I wish I had somebody here today that can say I've been through some stuff and when I was going through it I didn't know I would get through it. But now when I look back over my life and I'm a living witness that God is able to get you through the storm. Somebody might be going through something right now, but I want you to know that we serve a God that's able God empowers us. God wants you to know him personally, intimately, and eternally. And that eternity don't start over there. It starts right here. That divine power of God and presence of God begins on this side. Quit talking like you used to be before you got saved. And quit living like you used to live before you got saved. And believe God at his word that his power is still prevalent and still available for those who believe. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Christ, for the power of your word, for the presence of your Holy Spirit, and for the kindness that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, God, that Christ came into this world to make the world know you, to show himself as that living example and that perfect image of who you are so that we could better know you as those who have come to you. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that as we continue through these series of messages, that we will not just be hearers of the word, that we will become doers of the word, and that we would take your word at his word, that we will believe that when you say according to your divine power, you've given us everything for life and godliness. Help us to believe that and to act on it. When you say that you wanted us to be a part of your divine nature, 
let us take that and receive it and act on it. When you say that you want us to be one as you and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, let us receive that and act on it. Let us not see them as mere words, but these are promises and desires that you have given to us, your people. And so we thank you, God, for your word. Let it resonate into the hearts and the minds of each of us. And if there's somebody here today who has never been saved, let them know they can't receive all of you without giving all of themselves unto you. If there's somebody here who has backslidden or maybe gotten out of the church and just drifted away for whatever reason, let them know, God, today is the day to come back home. If there's somebody here, God, that, that maybe is already saved but don't have a personal church family to call their own, God, if they're here today, if you touch their heart, move them, God, to become a part of our family so that we can grow together as we go together. If there's somebody here that just needs prayer, God, don't allow the enemy to rob them of their potential based on the fears and the doubts that he would try to grip their hearts and their minds with. God, we ask it in Jesus' name. And whatever you do, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. As they lead us in a song of invitation, if you're here today, you've never accepted Christ, you want to rededicate your life, become a part of our church family, have somebody pray with you, pray for you. Would you come? Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed. Be bold enough, man enough, woman Come enough to make that decision. Jesus we're going to ask that all walking would cease until we'll be out in a moment, but we're going to ask that you would come. If that's you today, would you come? come to Jesus. Every saint ought to be praying. Come Every person that's not born Jesus. again ought to come. Every person that needs to rededicate Just their life, amen, ought to come. If that's you today, don't, don't be ashamed. He will save God wants to save you. you. He wants he you to know him. He will say. There's somebody else. Would you come? He will say. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. You don't live this life for one time and you don't get a chance every day. You don't know when you got to depart from here. He will say. But he wants to save you today. He, he wants to deliver you. He wants to take you, you to new heights in himself. But you got to be willing to come. Would you come today? Only trust him. Will you trust him? Only trust With your heart, with your soul, with your mind. Only trust I had to trust him when I was drowned and reckless. Just now, just now. But somebody told me that God would change my life. I was on a path to destruction. Only but he told me that if I give my life to him, he would change it, and I can stand 40 years later saying that that person didn't lie to me. He Jesus is, is the best thing that ever happened to me. I tell he people all the time, if I hadn't gotten saved, I'd have been dead by now or in prison for life. But God turned my life around. And I want you to know he's still saving. He's still delivering. He's still turning lives around. But you've got to trust him. You can't be afraid. He's able today. He's able. Anybody know he's able? Will you trust him? If you're here today and you wanted to come but didn't come, you can fill out that card in front of the pew in front of you, or you can see one of these men and women or myself after service. We have that happen often where people come after service that I wanted to come. If that's you today, don't be afraid. Don't leave this, don't leave this house without a personal relationship with God. God forbid any of us to leave here, have a car accident or something goes wrong. It may not even be your fault. Somebody can be texting and driving and have a head-on collision and take you out. Somebody can be drunk. It happens all the time. And the drunkard lives, but we die. Dying ain't the worst thing that can happen. Dying without Christ is the worst thing that can happen. So if you're here today and you did not come, make sure when you leave here today, even if you don't want to become a part of our church, make sure you know Christ. Give your life to Christ before it's everlasting too late. God forbid anything wrong should go in our lives. But just in case, have that not only spiritual and Christ insurance, have that Christ-like assurance. Amen. All right, as we prepare to leave, I want to thank you for coming, and I want to thank all of you for sharing with us, those that are live streaming, those that will hear us by way of radio. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. I'm encouraging you as we go and celebrate this Black History Month that you will continue to bring someone with you, that you will continue to come back. Join us on Wednesday at noonday as we go through the book of 1 Timothy, studying the whole book of Timothy. And then at night, in the evening, from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we're going through the book of James. And we're having a wonderful time. Great turnout. But if you're not been coming, I encourage you to be a part of us. Also, for those who are live streaming, if you desire to contact us, you can reach 
us at 10600 Watterson Trail, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299. Or you can call us at 502-267-6121. We encourage everybody to participate. God is doing a great work in and through us, and we invite you to be a part of it. Amen. Grab somebody's hand next to you as we pray, as we depart from this place, but never from his presence. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for allowing us to gather here today. We give you praise for your word and for worship. And we thank you, God, for everything that has transpired unto you, O oh God. We give all the praise, honor, and the glory. For whatever purpose the young lady came, we pray, God, that you put a hedge of protection around her, that no evil will come near her dwelling, and that you would place people that are positive and that are Christ-like in her life that would help her to live and to build on the foundation that's been established through your son, Jesus Christ. We also thank you, God, for the young lady, Olivia, who was baptized today and we pray God as she continues to live out her life God that you will guard her and keep her mind and her heart in perfect peace and that she might be a vessel fit for the master's use then God I pray your peace and your power and your prosperity upon every home and every heart represented here and that all of us leave here today with a de desire and a hunger and a thirst to know you personally intimately and eternally in the name of Jesus now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, power, and majesty, both now and forever. Let the believing heart say, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. See you on Wednesday. Bring somebody with you. Amen.